ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان نبينا محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين ما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته ان شاء الله we'll continue where we left off uh, verse number 93 and we're getting closer and closer to the end of the surah <coughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the story of Dhul Qarnayn <coughs> and Allah azza wa jalla says hatta idha balagha bayna saddayn until <coughs> forgive me until Dhul Qarnayn reached bayna saddayn and the ulama of tafsir they say that wajada min dunihima it means beyond these mountains saddain or mountains uh, uh, literally it means barriers so beyond these mountains and the scholars they've had difference of opinion where these mountains are actually some most of them have said that it is in the lands of uh, azerbaijan and uh, afghanistan and these places uh, wallahu alam uh, where it actually is so once dhul qarnain passed this uh, place he found qawman a group of people la yakaduna yafqahuna qawla they were almost as if they did not understand speech most of our qiraat when we read we say la yakaduna yafqahuna qawla but in Kisa'i, in the Riwayah of Kisa'i and Hamza, they say, La yakaduna uh, yufqihuna qawla. So in Akhira, yafqahuna qawla, it means that they cannot understand. That they cannot understand. And yufqihuna, it means they could not be understood. But the important point here to note is, Allah Azza wa Jalla says, La yakaduna, almost as if. Meaning that there was other ways for them to uh, make them uh, to make themselves understood, and some of the ulama have said this is an indirect way of showing that um, the uh, sign language and uh, uh, to show bil ishara by pointing and uh, using simple words to describe things. So these people. It was as if they did not understand any words that were spoken, any spoken language. But through ishara and by pointing and directing, they could make themselves understood. So then they said, Qadu ya dal qarnain. So now when they speak, you can understand that it is not proper speech because they cannot understand what Dhul Qarnain is saying. It's through ishara, it is by directions. And also, some of the scholars have said it is through interpretation. So they speak to Dhul Qarnayn and they say, Ya Dhul Qarnayn, Inna Ya'juj wa Ma'juj. So now there's the speech of Ya'juj and Ma'juj. Who are the Ya'juj and Ma'juj? The scholars in Islam they say that Ya'juj and Ma'juj, they are two tribes, two tribes of Banu Adam. They are human beings not some monsters or anything like that but they are from the banu adam however as we will learn in this story they were trapped by dhul qarnain with the permission of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the ya'juj and ma'juj the scholars in islam they speak about them and they say that they committed the first offense which was they were known to be cannibals they used to actually eat human beings and this is one of the things that has made Ya'juj and Ma'juj different from other people that Ya'juj and Ma'juj they were cannibals they would consume the flesh of other human beings and they used to wreak havoc amongst people and then wherever they would go they would uh, it would follow uh, destruction meaning that they would wreak havoc on the land. So these people, they're complaining about the Ya'juj and Ma'juj, and they say, Mufsiduna fil ard. 
they come with this facade. And as we mentioned, some of the facade is that they used to actually eat human beings. And then they plead to Dhul Qarnayn. And they say, فَهَلْ نَجْعَلُ لَكَ خَرُجَ عَلَىٰ أَن تَجْعَلَ بَيْنَنَا وَبَيْنَهُمْ سَدَّىٰ Is there any possibility for you to make a barrier, a, a wall between us and them? And this teaches us in the, uh, in the bigger context of things that when it comes to evil, then a person needs to protect themselves from evil. One of the companions of the Prophet وسلم, he used to say, I do not ask about evil for the sake of it. But the only reason I ask about evil is so that I can protect myself from it. So once you see evil, you need to run in the other direction. You, uh, you need to run to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So these people, they understand who Dhul Qarnayn is and they ask Dhul Qarnayn with the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help them. And Dhul Qarnayn, he reminds them. And this is the, the character of the true believer that they do not attribute whatever they do to themselves. This is very important because the people that mention uh, whatever they do for people as their favor upon others, this is not Islam. This is the way of uh, Qarun and Fir'aun and so on. But listen to what Dhul Qarnayn says. He says, قَالَ مَا مَكَّنِّي فِيهِ رَبِّي خَيْرٍ that what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made me able to do, to establish, to do, it is far better. So he reminds them and he reminds himself of the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if we put it in a practical context, if a person stands up for the masjid, if you work for the sake of the community, the Muslim ummah, then you always remember that this is from the blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the tawfiq of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You, you never do what is known as man. Do you know what man is? Man is that you mention the favor upon others. That you say, if it wasn't for me, the masjid would have been locked. If it wasn't for me, then you wouldn't have this experience. And so on. So it is very, very important because Fir'aun, as we've spoken about before, Fir'aun is the one that does man. Who does he do man upon? Upon the whole of Banu Israel, upon his own people. And specifically, specifically he does man upon Musa alayhi salam. And what does he say? أَلَمْ نُرَبِّكَ فِينَا وَلِيدًا وَلَبِثَّ فِينَا مِنْ عُمُرِكَ سِنِينَ وَفَعَلْتَ فَعَلَتَكَ الَّتِي فَعَلْتَ so this man, it is not from the Muslim. That whatever you do, you leave it with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If people are happy, alhamdulillah. If people are not happy, then alhamdulillah, awwalan wa akhira. So this is very important for us that are engaged in the da'wah to remember. Allah azza wa jal praises these type of people. They say, إِنَّمَا نُطْعِمُكُمْ لِوَجْهِ اللَّهِ لا نريد منكم جزاء ولا شكورا that we do not want any reward from you and we don't even want you to say thank you that we leave it with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala why? because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ultimately he is وكان الله شاكرا عليما that Allah azza wa jal is sufficient he is the one that is grateful and he is the one that is all knowing so here Dhul Qadnain he reminds them and he says مَا مَكَّنِّي فِيهِ رَبِّي خير. That what Allah Azza wa Jal has established, established me and given me is much better. But notice here he says فَأَعِينُونِي بِقُوَّةِ فَأَعِينُونِي بِقُوَّةِ So help me with your strength. And this is a point that we mentioned before which shows that even Dhul Qarnayn he was a king. Not only was, a, was he a king but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala established him in the land. Inna makanna lahu fil ardi wa atainahu min kulli shayin sababa. Allah azza wa jal established him on the land. But 
But even Dhul Qarnayn, when he speaks to these people, what does he say? He says, فَعِينُونِي بِقُوَّةً So help me with your strength. This, brothers and sisters, it shows that Islam was and never will be a one-man show. In order to establish a community, people need to come together. They need to help each other. Because if one person tries to do everything by themselves, then they will fall short. Even the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Allah Azza wa Jal gave him Abu Bakr al-Siddiq and Umar bin al-Khattab. When we speak about uh, Musa Alayhi Salam, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala gave him who? Harun. Akhi shtud bihi azri wa ashrikhu fi amri. That uh, Harun was a supporter of Musa Alayhi Salam. That whenever Musa alayhi salam felt that he couldn't do it, Harun was there with him. If you speak about Isa alayhi salam, who did Allah wa Jal give to Isa? The Hawariyeen. Man ansari ila Allah. Qala al Hawariyuna, nahnu ansarullah. So it is never a one man show. It can never be. Because if a person stands by themselves, then they will fall short. So if Dhul Qarnayn, if Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and all these righteous people could not do it alone, then we cannot do it alone. So we need to help each other when it comes to khair. And to help a brother or a sister when it comes to khair, then that itself is khair. Uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, something as simple as guiding people towards goodness. You might not be doing the good yourself, but the Prophet ﷺ said, Inna dala ala al khayri kafa'ili. Inna dala ala al khayri kafa'ili. That the person who guides others shows them what is good, then it is as if he did it himself. So it is very important here, fa'ainu ni bihuwa, that when Dhul Qanayn speaks, he doesn't say, I will do it myself. He says, You help me. Join in the khair. Let us work together and let us make this possible. أَجْعَلْ بَيْنَكُمْ وَبَيْنَهُمْ رَدْمَا And I will make this barrier, this uh, wall between you and them. آتُونِي زُبَرَ الحديد. And this shows leadership. That Dhul Qarnayn, he is asking for help, but at the same time he shows leadership. He shows how to do things. And he teaches people. He says, bring me this and bring me that. حَتَّى إِذَا سَاوَى بَيْنَ الصَّدَفَيْنِ قَالَ انفخوا. And he's giving commands. Not that he thinks for a moment that he can do it by himself, but he is showing what a leader means. And this is similar to the Prophet ﷺ. When the Prophet ﷺ, when he was with his companions, especially before battles and things like that, he used to sit with the people and he used to say, Ashiru aliya ayyuhan nas, that give me your opinions. And this is where Allah says, uh, Wa amruhum shura. That in Islam there's such a thing as shura, that there's no dictatorship. Not one person can dictate to others what to do. But the amr, the matter, the affair should be shura, that the people of understanding, they give their opinions. But at the end of the day, there is one opinion and people fall in line with that opinion. And this is how um, governments in Islamic governments work, and even to the uh, uh, to the family itself. That a husband, for example, he shouldn't be a dictator in his house. A good husband, a good father, he brings his children, he brings his wives, he brings the people in the household, and he says says to them, "What do you think?" How should we go about this? And at the end of the day, the family understands that the matter lies with the husband, with the father. And if the father says, let us do it this way, then they respect that. But the father should not just go by himself and say, this is what I did, uh, decided. So bringing people in and giving them a chance to voice their opinion, this is Islamic. And this is something that we often neglect. 
حتى إذا جعله نارا قال آتوني أفرغ عليه قطرا so uh, Dhul Qadnin he continues with uh, the commands and the instructions that he gives and Allah Azza wa Jal says فَمَا اسْتَطَاعُوا أَنْ يَظْهَرُوهُ وَمَا اسْتَطَاعُوا لَهُ نَقْبَى that these Ya'juj uh, and Ma'juj in English they refer to as Gog and Magog they were not they will never be able to penetrate this wall they will never be able to penetrate this wall until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has decided for it and this is one of the alamatu sa'a meaning that one of the major signs of yawm qiyamah is that the ya'juj and the ma'juj they will be let loose and they will be wreaking havoc once more and this is one of the major signs of yawm qiyamah but at this moment in time <coughs> Dhul Qanayn, he says, هَذَا رَحْمَةٌ مِّن رَبِّي And notice how uh, Dhul Qanayn, he always refers us back to Allah. And this shows his Iman in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And again, in a practical sense, whatever we're given in life, if you get a new phone, if you get a new car, if you get uh, a new house, whatever you get, you remember this is from the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the best example is the example of Sulaiman alayhi salam. Sulaiman alayhi salam, he was given a kingdom la yambaghi li ahadin min ba'di that it is not befitting for anyone else after me. He had literally the jinn at his disposal. If he wanted to, he could command the jinn. He had the rih, the winds that would carry him wherever he wanted. But even Sulaiman alayhi salam, he understood. He said, هَذَا, فضل, هذا uh, مِنْ فَضْلِ رَبِّي That this is from the bounties of my Lord. لِيَبْلُوَنِي To test me. أَشْكُرُ أَمْ أَكْفُرُ Will I be grateful or will I be from the ones that are, are ungrateful? So here you see the same thing. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, these pious people, they always refer back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whereas the disbelievers, what do they say? إِنَّمَا أُوْتِيْتُهُ عَلَىٰ عِلْمٍ عِنْدِي And they refer it back to themselves. So the Muslim always remembers Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wherever they are. فَإِذَا جَاءَ وَعْدُ رَبِّي جَعَلَهُ دَكَّا And this is some of the scholars that mention that Dhul Qarnayn is a prophet. They use this verse to show that this is wahi from Allah. That Allah Azza wa Jal told Dhul Qarnayn that there would come a time that this, uh, this building or this, um, uh, the wall that he built, جَعَدَهُ dakka That it will crumble and the Ya'juj and Ma'juj will come out. And then what does he say? He says, وَكَانَ وَعْدُ رَبِّي حَقَّا And the promise of my Lord is always true and this inshallah we'll conclude here uh, because we started a little bit later but if we linger on this verse وَكَانَ وَعَدُ رَبِّي حَقَّا that the promise of my Lord is true this means both in this dunya and especially in the akhirah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised us in all aspects when it comes to giving for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah Azza wa Jal promised us that when whatever you give, Allah Azza wa Jal will multiply it. But we don't believe. Allah Azza wa Jal told us that if you spend for the sake of Allah your lives, uh, your wealth, and everything else, your time, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bless you. But we don't believe. And some people, the non Muslims, Allah Azza wa Jal said, if you don't believe and you die upon shirk, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prepared Jahannam for you and those people do, do not believe. So when Allah Azza wa Jalla says, وَكَانَ, أم, وكان, رب, وَكَانَ وَعَدُ رَبِّي حَقَّا This is not only in this context but it touches on all other aspects of life. So if we believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has spoken the truth, وَمَنْ أَصْدَقُ مِنَ اللَّهِ قِيلًا وَمَنْ أَصْدَقُ مِنَ اللَّهِ حَدِيثًا 
that if we believe, truly believe in this, then it shows in our actions. But if our actions fall short, then there is a problem with our belief and we need to correct that. So inshallah, we'll stop here for today inshallah and we'll continue next time. Hada wa sallallahu ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.